What's up, Badger Nation? Hold on to your hats because we're about to unleash a ferocious classic episode from the deep, dark archives of the PPC Den podcast. This episode is guaranteed to set your Amazon PPC instincts on fire. Get ready to navigate the chaos, madness, and mayhem of Amazon advertising and unleash your inner badger. What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den podcast, where you're currently joined by thousands of Amazon marketers and entrepreneurs ready to take their Amazon advertising to the next level. I'm your host, Michael Erickson Fasheen, and you are tuned in to the longest running podcast series on Amazon advertising, going strong since 2018. Can you believe it? Check out our full Bam. list of content over at adbadger.com slash podcast and we've got a treat for you today by the end of today's episode i hope you walk away with an elevated understanding of what really matters and how to think about what it takes to truly build a company on amazon that is built to last ranks well and runs circles around your competition i know somebody who runs circles around his competition the one the only ryan hoffaker ryan Great to have you back on the show. How are you doing hey, today? I'm so I mean I'm I'm pumped to be here. Yes, there are my what you you mentioned the uh, running circles around my my wife and I are swimming right now, and she is smoking me. I mean she could just uh, I'm like a I'm like a little dolphin playing in water, and she's like a shark. Just, yeah. Just hey, by the way, by you the know, way, we're recording this at the, we're we're recording this at the time of the Olympics last night. We watched the women swimmers, and I think it's just crazy that the top three winner, you, you know, uh, gold, silver, and bronze, all of them beat the world record. Wow. Isn't that nuts? Uh, I mean, there's a really, really fascinating concept. I don't remember what it's called, but basically, you know, it's, it's like the four minute mile. Nobody thought that you could get into the four minute mile range. Uh, and then everyone was trying, everyone was trying, one person did it, and then everybody else did it. Or like Tony Hawk, skateboarder, took him decades of skateboarding until he did like a 720 spin, and then now 13 year olds do it. Uh, and then I think <laughs> I, I just saw something that like a 13 year old did like maybe a 1080 on a skateboard at like the age of you know an early teen yeah. and now that'll probably get broken in a couple of years by like an eight-year-old it just like every generation sees what's possible and it's like oh i can do that and they just do it younger and younger uh so seeing that that's not a surprise to me i think it's one of the most fascinating topics well you know i think it applies perfectly to what we're talking about today in the sense that you know how did how did that second person break the four minute mile you know mm -hmm. i'm a, i'm assuming they looked at how a person trained yeah you know what were what were the techniques that 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 other person used and you're building upon it you know so it's like collaborative coaching mm -hmm. in a sense and i think that fits absolutely perfectly for what we're going to be talking about today yeah i remember when i first got into entrepreneurship so long ago maybe 13 years ago and I was trying to figure out how to build a website and I had a friend who was an entrepreneur and I was like, what do I even do? Like, how do I begin? What do I, how do I start? What is WordPress? What is all of this stuff? And it took sure, me yeah. so like just understanding those starting blocks is something that took me a few weeks. And today it's so incredibly easy. Like those few weeks are now seconds. You can go from not knowing a thing about websites to having a website in a matter of minutes now you know, will the same thing happen in the future to other, other things? And I think the answer is, you know, yes, like technology gets better. Things speed up. Uh, speaking of speed, we would a little speed round episode for you today, because we're going to be covering a topic that again, a lot of times these podcasts get inspired by interactions, conversations that we have with a lot of listeners or customers uh, uh, or accounts that we're managing ourselves. And this topic has become more and more important. And we've mentioned, we've been mentioning it for the last few weeks that I think in general, the average cost per click on Amazon 
just in one year has gone up about 30%, which is an extreme jump to happen in one year. Uh, and, you know, it's happening probably because of a variety of factors. There's some supply chain stuff. Um, certain parts of the economy are growing faster than others. So certain people have, you know, money to spend and they're trying to buy stuff, but supply chain's messed up. So all of this stuff is happening right now talks about inflation all of this stuff is happening it's all sort of converging right in your amazon advertising account that i'm seeing a lot of accounts that are spending like spending more to get the same amount of clicks from last year or they're spending the same to get fewer clicks than they did last year so you know we've had years and years of really cheap clicks and i still see industries that do have pretty darn cheap clicks I saw an account the other day with like clicks, you know, 20 to 40 cent range. Amazing. But in Amazing. general, CPCs are going up all the time. And I think, you know, it has always been a mistake to have your entire Amazon marketing strategy only be focused on PPC. It has always been a mistake. But as CPC gets more competitive and more expensive, that becomes paramount front and center i'm having a lot of conversations with people where they're saying hey like i just can't seem to get my a cost down i'm doing everything amazon advertising wise uh but i can't they can't shake a high a cost and a lot of times it's because they're under optimized in other areas of their business so those of us that spend like 95 percent of our time like improving our companies on amazon only looking at PPC, this episode's for you. And we've talked about it on the show before, but we're going to do an updated episode on Amazon's ranking algorithm. And is it A9? Is it A10? Where do these words come from? Does anybody know? Yeah, these different articles you read, it's like, are we at the A10 or are we at the A9? I I don't know. I hear people, some people referring it to the A9 still, some people referring it to A10. Mm-hmm. Who knows? In fact, that would be good you know, comment on YouTube or let mm-hmm. us know what you, where you think we are. Yeah, it's a lot good. easier on Google. Google actually has a separate animal name for every update, like a penguin update or uh, I forget the other names. Of Panda, penguin. Panda, yeah. that's right. Uh, so yeah, Google names them with animals. Amazon doesn't communicate as much. But um, so what we want to do here is just do a quick rundown, uh, share our thoughts uh, share some things that some of you know the most successful people that we interact with are doing on Amazon to really optimize the whole gamut of their marketing on Amazon so that they're able to you know thread the needles, navigate through the asteroid field, which is 2021's CPC spike because it's definitely spiking this year. So being aware of these other factors is incredibly key. Uh, and because there's so many of them, there's there's a couple here. We wanted to do some speed rounds. Uh, we want to say each topic that we touch on, we're only going to spend about three, four minutes on. So that by the end of this episode, we've got a good tour and we've got a good sense of other activities to begin to think about, weave into our project management board. So as, as you have that project management board, whether it be in Trello, Teamwork, Monday, Asana, whatever, as you have those tasks in there, you can start to populate them with other tasks that will, of course, help complement your PPC, make your PPC have an easier time. So with all that said, let us get into it, whether it be A9, A10, whatever you're calling it, the Amazon ranking factors. And here we go. Alrighty, Ryan. Now, depending on where you look and how you look at these, (laughs) there's either uh, nine, 10, eight factors. We've combined a few that are hyper related. Uh, so we are going to cover five factors here today. Um, so why don't you kick it off with this very first one? Three minutes, start the clock. All right, here we go. Number one is seller authority. Okay, so I'm going to read through a number of factors that influence seller authority, your buy box factors, your feedback rating, your performance metrics, following the rules, customer service, response time, inventory management, shipping times, returns, A to Z claims, cancellation rates, order defect rate. 
Uh, these are all really, really huge things, and I, I want to highlight one of these uh, right now in the speed round, and that is inventory management. Many of you know since April 22nd, we've had a lot of challenges with uh, you know SKU level inventory management now to account level inventory management, integrating 3PLs permanently into your business. All of these different factors uh, are you know having a healthy business. The uh, the the other thing that I probably want to highlight in seller authority is your. Uh, review management. I mean, Amazon just released a few weeks ago the ability to communicate with one to three star reviews. How are you integrating that into your uh, into your team uh, to really set your company up for success? So those are just a few of the things that I want to highlight under under number one. Yeah. yeah, a lot of this I view as like the administration of running a company on Amazon. You know, all of these things. If you think of a standalone Shopify store. All of these things are happening on a standalone e-commerce store. And I think what's interesting on Amazon is that all of these factors are now known by Amazon. They know how you're performing. They know what their customers like. People are shopping on Amazon. So they are rewarding companies that basically like follow their rules. You know, yes, I, I interacted with a, a client inventory you know, out of, you know, thousands of SKUs, they have SKUs going out of stock all the time. And their PPC campaigns are, it's like you're stuck in cement trying to to take these, you know, up the mountain of PPC greatness. You're like stuck, you're like trudging in mud as you're constantly like letting campaigns build momentum and then have the rug pulled out from underneath them. So all of this administration stuff matters. You know, Amazon knows, Amazon wants to see you treat everyone their customers like fantastically they want you to have good seller authority so all of these things matter a ton and it's a lot it's a, it's a lot of stuff uh, i see a lot, a lot of times people have you know good looking ppc campaigns but it just seems like things are stuck in the mud it's like inventory management it's response times it's returns it's all of these things weighing them down and that's the first one seller authority the general administration of your Amazon business, is it being managed well? So this is a really big one. Number two, impressions and click-through rate. Uh, take it away, Ryan. Uh, yeah, we, we actually combined, you know, some people in the, the, the different uh, information out there, they were separating impressions and click-through rate. We, we, uh, we combined them uh, mm -hmm. because we're not so, we're not convinced that higher impressions actually does it because uh, uh, you do need a decent click-through rate. And the first thing that I think about when I think about a click-through rate is when a relevant customer looks at your listing, uh, the, the persuasion process primarily of the hero image, you know, the primary image, mm -hmm. and your title, right? And uh, Amazon wants clicks. And they want people to click on things, and now they're they're giving you tools uh, to click on things like the A/B split testing mm -hmm. of images, uh, and I think titles, if I'm not for sure, uh, mm -hmm. on that as well. So they are interested. They are they are inter introducing tools to incentivize us sellers, you know, to click on things. So that's something that we need to take into consideration moving forward. Yeah, like what a nightmare scenario for Amazon to have somebody search something and then not click on anything. It's a nightmare scenario. They want yeah. people to move from search to click. So it is incredibly reasonable that they would want to incentivize companies that can build products that are very clickable. Um, so all of those things that you mentioned, tacking on the reviews, the actual review, because like people yes. will see that when they're looking the at price. the product listing and the product ad, uh, the pricing, if it's a price that's out of bounds for them, they may not click on it. They may even filter it in the first place, you know, only show me products up to a certain price uh, and you might not get the impression. So that, that's where I think like the impressions comes in of like, are there filters that people are running where they're not even bothering to see your product in the first place? And then of course, if they do see it, are they clicking on it? it makes total sense to build clickable products. And I think it, what's really interesting about the like impressions in CTR and seller authority, the one before, which seller authority is a 
multitude of factors. I think what's so interesting about it is that these are not destinations and it's actually true with all of these things. They're, these are not destinations. It's not as if you s- split test a uh, title and you're done, or you get a, you know, four and a half stars and you're done. It's like if there's consistent process to continue to look at this, continue to look for ways to optimize, to continue to stay ahead of your competition so that your listing doesn't get stagnant. Uh, you know, competitors nipping at your heels, make it a moving target, be constantly trying to improve. So, you know, I've talked to sellers that have said things like, my product is perfect. I spent so much time optimizing it when I launched it eight months ago. I think it's, that's like not the spirit that I see a lot of high powered companies on Amazon share. It's like, they're constantly like, they have it on a routine. What am I doing? Do I need to optimize anything uh, to boost my impressions and click through rate? Um, so I think that's an important part, which brings us to our third factor, which is Conversion rate. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, conversion rate. And talk to us a little bit about conversion rate. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm just surprised uh, in talking to some business owners who are not tracking this on a, on a daily basis um, and because it's such a critical component, uh, in my opinion. I mean, it's, it's, it's a critical component to your business. Not only... Uh, your parents, uh, you know, if you have a if, a, if you have a uh, an ASIN, just a standalone ASIN, but you, I, I even track. Uh, I think it's important to track the variations, the unit session percentage in, in your business reports of the variations, uh, because as people click on your product, what percentage of those are purchasing your product, right? And, and Michael and I talked about this a few weeks before, but you know. Uh, if you were to increase your unit session percentage from 1.13, 12 to 13, you know, just one point, what that gives you on the back end is seven A cost points, mm-hmm. right? So I love, 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 love what you just said before about never arriving, but always in process, always in process of optimizing your listing to, to grab. You know, every every couple months, you know, make a realistic goal to try to grab some uh, unit session percentage points. You know, mm-hmm. whether that be testing your your image stacks, uh, that that to me is you know just to be honest, that that to me is the one that that can move the dial the best um, outside of price, right? Uh, so testing the price, testing uh, your image stacks are absolutely critical for. Uh, you know, maintaining a good conversion rate. And also too, I want to keep things in perspective. When I first started out five years ago, I had a pretty good conversion rate. When you start running ads, the unit session percentage will drop a little bit. But as your overall health of your company grows, I started to see continued increase in my unit session percentage. Uh, There are other factors. There's placement, right? Uh, You know, the placement of your ads can can definitely influence both click-through rate and um, your unit session percentage, uh, but that is absolutely key. I couldn't, you know, it, it, it's one of those factors that when we do make the changes, you should see those fluctuate. Um, hopefully up. Sometimes I've made changes and it's gone down, and I'm like, okay, got to change that back. But that is that is absolutely key for. Um, and again, Amazon wants to put your product in front of people that are going to buy, right? Um, this is a this is a huge huge factor in in your overall business in my opinion. So yeah. Uh, also, how about a re- review strategy? I would lump into conversion rate boosting as well. Yes. Uh, I think it'd be so fascinating to see a report uh, on you know as your like your historic unit session percentage over time as your reviews changed. Uh, I think that'd be just so fascinating to track. So having a good review strategy in place matters a ton here. Number four on this list, existing sales on Amazon. Um, so, you know, sales begets sales as the, uh, as we learned, as it has been in all of history, that the more successful your product is today, more likely it will be successful again in the future. Um, so 
your existing sales history, you know, entrenched products, entrenched sales, entrenched good revenue per click. So Amazon wants every session to end in a click and of course a purchase because uh, you have to click on it and then purchase. So like that's their ideal. Uh, so this relates to conversion rate. But when it comes to sort of existing sales on Amazon, Ryan, how do you rope your head around this one? I, I, to be to be very fair, I don't know much about it. Um, the the things that we, you know, are that we're doing research to discover is the frequently bought together products, as well as um, the B two B business to business purchases inside of Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you know, all I really know at this at this time is that, you know, well, a little while back, as I'm in my uh, my reports, my business reports, I'm starting to see all these columns, these B2B columns, you know, the B2B column, uh, unit session percentage. Um, there's, I think there's like somewhere six to eight of them inside the business reports, which tells me that Amazon thinks it's important to highlight those internal sales. Mm-hmm. That's my limited understanding about it. I, I'm open to more education on that, but uh, those are the two things that I think about with uh, existing sales uh, on sale, on Amazon. Right. And last, which the last one being offsite sales. Uh, so what I think is really interesting, uh, and I have always intuitively known this, is that Amazon looks at sales conversion rate coming from different traffic sources differently. Um, so what I think is interesting here is that when it comes to off-site sales, they've actually, it's always been suspected. Like, hey, if I run Facebook ads to my product page, I'll get a boost somehow. Uh, if I run Google ads to my product page, I'll get a boost somehow. If I'm running an email, if I have an email list and I'm emailing them, telling them to go buy it on Amazon, I'll get a boost on my Amazon overall ranking. And We've always sort of known this, but recently Amazon came out and they said a few things about this specific topic, offsite traffic, didn't they? That they did. Uh, you know, we, 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 we were joking beforehand and it's like, we kind of knew it, but now they're like, they're, they got, you know, flashing red lights uh, saying, hey, we really want you to do this. We really want you to send outside traffic. Um, and they're rewarding, uh, they're rewarding um, uh, businesses for it. Um, and I believe what the, what they're in, this is called the the brand referral bonus program, and it mm-hmm. says you can earn a bonus a bonus averaging ten percent uh, of the sales uh, from traffic that you drive to your Amazon listing if you set up the attribution link. That's the way that they can track it. Um, so. Uh, this is something that we've all suspected for quite some time. I, I don't think <laughs> it's not hidden anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, this is way out in the open. They do want you to send external traffic uh, to your listing. And uh, again, they are rewarding you for it. So Yeah. We'll have some more episodes in the future because I think that's such an interesting topic, like how to run Facebook ads to your Amazon listing, how to track it, how to measure it, how to organize that. Uh, we can get some Facebook ads people for sure on on here. So, you know, all of those things are factors. So that was seller authority, impressions and CTR, conversion rate, uh, existing sales, and offsite sales, and of course, PPC sales. Um, so, what I think is interesting here is that PPC sales is one component of many. I think the the change and the evolution that's happening on Amazon right now is that yes, PPC sales are important and other things are also important. And where we focus our time and energy is incredibly important and incredibly limited. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs taking care, like if you can turn something into, you know, you have a Facebook ads person who's gonna run your Facebook ads to your Amazon listing so that now you can go focus on other areas, right? So it's all about building this in this big marketing machine so that you're not dedicating 100% of your time on offsite sales. So you're not dedicating 100% of your time 
on the administration running of the company, that you're not dedicating 100% of your time on product page optimization. There's a lot of things, PVC sales being one of them, of course. And here, I still believe the, the standard adage of, hey, I want to rank for uh, mason jars. So I'm going to go bid on mason jars in my PPC campaigns. I'm going to convert well on it. I'm going to increase my orders. I'm going to get aggressive. I'm going to have a semi-aggressive ACOS on it. And that helps directly and indirectly a lot of these other factors. You know, the more sales you get for mason jars, uh, the better. Uh, that just fuels existing sales on Amazon. Uh, that can fuel better reviews. That can fuel a lot of other things which you should also be working on. So having that review structure, like all of these things are so connected. And the sort of for me, the, the, the point of this episode is to try to wake advertisers up that if 100% of your time has just been focused on PPC sales as your primary ranking factor, that is only one piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. You know, the one thing that I want to say about how PPC sales, and I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir in this regard, but you can't do all, you can't run a strong business anymore without PPC. Right. Right. It is absolutely necessary. Right. No doubt. It absolutely necessary. I, I, I feel bad uh, for, for some friends that I talked to about a year and a half ago that, were really reluctant to get into their PPC journey on Amazon and they're having, they just got in wait They got in, they got in late and, uh, and it caused a lot of challenges in their business. So it's, it's a, it's, it's a component. It's a critical component. Is it everything? Absolutely not. Right. Uh, but it's, it's, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's a necessary piece for, running a comprehensive business, um, you know, you know, at this point. And uh, which is, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why Ad Badger, specifically this podcast is just, you know, everybody's realized they've, they've needed it. They, they need PPC and it's, um, um, and it's critical for your business. And with that, we will leave you to it. Have a good one, everyone. I will see you next week here on the PPC Den podcast. Peace.